Right. Um, just before, uh, we are now currently at chapter two. We are focusing on the stiffness, met uh, stiffness um, method or direct method to find the stiffness metrics for our spring. Eh? So again, just to recap what uh, we have covered so far, uh, F equal to KD is what we are uh, focusing on currently. And then we have discussed a few uh, tutorial questions already so far. Um, and we try to solve the, the K, the displacement, and the F, right? And today we're going to look at uh, two tutorial questions. And just to remind you that um, we have two types of uh, boundary condition. One is homogeneous, one is non-homogeneous, right? Uh, homogeneous is that um, you have no movement uh, inside. The displacement is zero in the system, while non-homogeneous that is that uh, you have a movement. Do you have a displacement in your system? Okay. So let's go to uh, today to a question. OK, now um, if you look at your screen now, we are having a, a spring system. Yeah, all right. So uh, we, what we need to find from this uh, system is that we need to uh, find the global stiffness matrix with our capital K with a square bracket. The first one. Uh, then B to find displacement at node two and four, which is here, two and four. What is the displacement here? Um, C the global nodal forces, global nodal forces, meaning they uh, the word global means we need to find the capital F uh, at all the point here. One, two, three, four, and five. Then D is a local element forces where we need to uh, mesh or dis, uh, disc discretize uh, these four elements. We need to disassemble these four elements and then we look at individual element and then we need to draw the free body diagram. Okay. Um, you're given uh, point one and point five is a fixed point, meaning point one and point five is a fixed point. Uh, and this uh, del, this displacement, uh, 0. 0.5 when is subject to capital F sub phi x here in x direction, it will move from here and then connect to here. All right, the displacement given is uh, 20 mm. So be careful on the um, unit here. So it's important that you know how to convert uh, the unit into the common unit, unit SI. Okay, the spring constant is given, so it's 200 kilonewton over meter for all the spring. Okay. All right, now first question. Uh, Asma, are you there? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, look at the screen. So how many, how many spring that you have here? Four. Four, yeah? Okay, good. Right, let's continue discussing the tutorial question. All right, now um, we know that spring stiffness gives us, uh, uh, the, the spring stiffness matrix is uh, K, uh, positive K minus K minus K, K. So we can write the stiffness matrix for each element in this form, okay? So uh, how you write the individual uh, stiffness matrix, you write K uh, superscript one. It means that it's for element one or for spring number one, equal to 200 minus 200 minus 200 and 200. This, the, the format positive, negative, negative, positive is fixed already. What will be changing it will, is the K value. Uh, K value will be given in the question. So you just substitute the given question. All right. So same for element two, element three, and element four. Okay. So if this one, how we mark, you write K1 equal to 200 
200 minus 200 minus 200 positive 200 you get uh, one mark for each one so here you have four marks already because you have four spring okay each will give you one mark uh, you can write equal to this one k2 k3 k4 okay in this case uh, since you're having the same k uh, then you can write like this if the k is different then you cannot write uh, like this okay you need to separate each one of it okay so far we are we are clear we are good huh? stop me uh, if you're not able to uh, catch up huh? Then after that, we will do superposition or superimpose to get the global stiffness matrix. Now just take your time to, to do it. Eh? To do it. So just on your scratch, yeah. So let's say you have element one. The first one you build 200 minus 200 okay again apologize for my writing on the screen i'll show you the first one all right then you repeat the same process for uh, the second one you use your pencil you don't need to draw a very deep line but you just split the 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 stiffness matrix number and then since this is number one so you look at spring number one spring number one is connecting point one and point two okay so in your parking lot here or parking ticket here you just write one and two and one and two okay so later when you park your number into global stiffness matrix uh, then it's more convenient yeah you repeat the same for uh, two, three, and four. So I, I will just show you the last one. Eh? You repeat for the same for all the individual Stephen matrix. Although the number is the same, eh? but the parking number is different. Okay, Each one of it have different parking number. Okay, try to understand how you park your number and what what we are trying to do here okay so again if you look at uh, element number four when you write your stiffness matrix you just use your pencil just to draw a, a very light line and then you look at point number four uh, element number four element number four connecting point four and point five so what you write is four and five four and five same eh? same with the two and three so element two connecting two and three element three connecting three and four same same like this okay then you combine everything you park the number as what we learned so far or in our previous class you combine them to put into this uh, global giant parking complex here okay just remember to change what is important here is that um, on the top of your screen here is element stiffness matrix which is using a small k here and the question asking for global stiffness matrix with is capital K here. All right. So just be careful when you come to exam. All right. Look at the question. The question asks you to find what? Huh? So the question asks you to find global stiffness matrix. So it's a capital K. All right. And you are having four, uh, five moving point there. Or five interest uh, point there so you are having okay point one two three four five so in your parking complex there you are having five layer of uh, numbers all right 
your parking number or a parking complex. You just use your pencil, right? Just to draft out the the the, the general shape of the parking complex or the global in the matrix. Then uh, conventionally we will follow the numbers uh, in the in the question, right? So we already discussed what happened if you have a, a number not in sequence in the previous tutorial question, right? In this question, we have all the points one, two, three, four, five in a sequence. We have already discussed one tutorial question that what happened if the question already flipped the number, then how do we assemble it and assembly it, right? So if not sure, I'll go back to the previous lecture. Huh? So you write, write the numbers in sequence one, two, three, four, five, okay, one, two, three, four, five, okay, then you, then you park the number accordingly to your element the matrix. Now, for example, uh, just highlight, yeah, I think most of, most of you already understand how, how to park the number. I will discuss only one from here. So, if you're look, looking at element number four, so element number four is point four and five. Okay, four and five. So how do you put 200 in a global statement matrix here? So 200 consists of parking number four, four. So you go and find four and four. So there is a 200 here, okay? So the, the final answer is 400 because you, are, you, you already uh, uh, mixed with other element number already, okay? So this is the final number where you get 400. But uh, to park this 200, you go and find the parking lot. And this one, minus 200 here is 5, 4. So you go and find 5 and 4. So you park this 200 here, okay? Minus 200 here. Then minus 200 below this one, is 4 and 5, so you're going to find 4 and 5, so you park this minus 200 here. And the last number, 200, 200 having the parking number 5, 5, so you're going to find in the parking complex there, 5 and 5, so you park the 200. You repeat the same for element 1, 2, 3, 4, right, for all the element you park inside this parking complex. Okay, the process from here to here, we call it superposition or superimpose. Okay, make sure this, you know how to park this number. Okay, uh, you need this skill throughout this module. Okay, you need this skill throughout this module. Make sure you understand how to park the numbers. Okay. Clear, every one of you? Any questions so far uh, for the information on the screen here? Uh, anything? Clear? Everyone clear? All right. Uh, yeah, uh, and of course, don't forget the numbers. Uh, the, the Sorry, the unit. Yeah? The unit is kilonewton over meter square. Okay, for the K. Yeah? for the steam matrix. It's a Newton over meter square. However, in the question, it gives you in kilo Newton over meter square, so you can use kilo Newton over meter square, okay? All right, let's continue. Since we already found this one, the, the, the global steam matrix, then the next steps, we will write F equal to KD, Okay, Re, uh, be careful on the small letter or capital letter, yeah? Uh, it represents different scenario. Okay, top one, you need to find the element. Bottom one is the global scale. So B, it asks you to find displacement, uh, the displacement uh, for point two and four. So before that, uh, because just now what you did is that you already have the capital K. So what you do is that you 
substitute this capital K in the in the capital F formula, F equal to KD here, then you write in this form here. Yeah? You write F equal to KD, then you expand it in the more proper form, mathematic form. So you have five points. So you have capital F sub 1x means in this point here, 1x means 0.1 in x direction. And same for F capital F 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x. Okay, yeah, stop me uh, if you're not able to understand why we can write in this format. Eh? Stop me. Eh? Okay, this one referring to the general equation f equal to kd. We just expand our f according to our scenario. We have five points there. Okay, five points. So we have uh, five capital F here on the left hand side. This one, the, the global the matrix K, you already derived just now in section A just now. I just copied. Uh, yeah, just a reminder. Um, some student when they copied from last section, they will forget the negative sign sometimes. Huh? They will forget the negative sign when they transfer from the previous answer, right? previous uh, section. So be careful when you transfer the number. All right. And then the displacement D here will also follow the number of points that you have in a question. In this, in this question, you're having one, two, three, four, five. You have five points. So you write U1, U2, U3, U4, U5. Why do we use U and not W and not using uh, V? It is because our direction is in X direction. We are using small u is because we are moving in X direction. If the question is vertically direction in Y, uh, then you use V. If the question in Z direction positive, then you use W, okay? All right, the next one, after you develop the full equation f equal to kd, so you are having five equation here. All right, matrix will always give you equation. So uh, just recap, how do you find the equation? You take this one, equal this row, multiply by this column. All right, and how do you get the, the, the full equation? You just multiply each each one with each uh, each row and each column. 200 times U1 plus minus 200 U2, 0 plus U3, 0 uh, times U4 plus uh, 0 times u5. So you get the first equation. Okay, you have five equation here. Huh? So just 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 uh, try to understand the matrix here. After that, what we do, we will, after we have this equation, the next step we always look at the boundary condition. Okay, boundary condition, what does it mean? It means that you look at any constraint that you have. So in this case, we are having uh, one point that is confirmed cannot move, which is point one, cannot move. However, point five is moving. Uh, point five is moving. We have two displacement is given here in to substitute inside this equation, f equal to kd. So from the question, point one cannot move. So u1, you write u1 equals zero. You get one mark there. And then from the question itself, it already tell you that 0.5 or it can move at a certain degree. Huh? So 0.5 in the question is give you it moving at 20 mm. Uh, be careful on the unit. We are using mm. However, always chain it to unit SI. Why we need to change to unit SI? Because your K unit is in Newton over meter meter here so you need to 
uh, analyze the question in the correct uh, dimension. Huh? So unit is mm, change it to meter yeah? uh, before you try to solve. So point number five is moving also. So you're having a point number five. Okay. Uh, Brian, are you there? Brian, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Brian. Yes, sir. Uh, how many meter that you have? How how many meter in a twenty mm? How many meter? How many meter you have? Uh, zero point zero two. Okay. Zero point. Zero, two. Okay, correct. All right, so once you convert into the correct unit, then you can solve already, okay? Um, you you substitute, uh, not substitute, uh, yeah, you, you write the boundary condition, u equal, u1 equals zero, u5 equal to 0 0.05 meter, so you get two marks here. And then you continue to solve, yeah? So you, you write U1, this one one mark, this one one mark, all right? Then you continue to, to solve also. Now, uh, what is interesting is that most students, they will, they will stop at here because they don't know how to proceed. There's a one hidden information in the question, all right? Now, when you are having... Uh, 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 point number two here. Point two, there is no external force and is continue connecting point one and point two. All right. So since this point is free to move in x direction, when you, you when you have a point that is free to move, uh, then there is no force there. Right. There is no external force there. There is an internal force. If you look at the element itself, there is an internal force. However, uh, when you look at the global scale capital F, there is no force at point number two. Same with point number three. Okay. Now what happened to point number four? If we, if we, if we can conclude that point two, point two, there's uh, the external force F2X is zero because point two is free to move and is connected to, to, uh, between spring one and spring two, this point is free to move in the uh, x direction, so there is no reaction force there. All right, and F three x is zero. Okay, this question. Next question will go to Chia. Chia, are you there? Okay, what is the force at point number four? Zero. Okay, why? Why you can say is zero? It was uh, it was similar to how uh, two and three was. Mm, okay, good. So because uh, point four is free to move also, huh? It's free to move in x direction. Okay, good. Uh, excellent. Huh? Okay, so point four also zero. So this three information is uh, uh additional point for you to score. So if you write this three, you score another three marks here. Okay, each one will give you one mark. Okay, very easy to score for this module. Eh? So as long as you extract the information, you demonstrate that you understand what is happening in the question, uh, you manage to score uh, very easy marks. Eh? So you are having uh, this bounding condition. Sometimes the question will ask you, write the, uh, define the bounding condition or write the bounding condition uh, as uh, in the question. All right, so you write this five, you get one, two, three, four, five, five marks already. Okay, quite easy to score, yeah. Okay, uh, stop me uh, if you're not able to understand why your boundary condition u one zero, u five equal to this one, uh, f two, three x, four x equal zero. Uh, if you don't understand, uh, stop me. Uh. Okay, then the next is just substitution of your number. All right, U1, 0, U5, 0 0.02, U5, 
F1X, we need to find F2X0, F3X0, F4X0, F5X0. So in this in this matrix alone, it already give you some hints. Huh? So five equation, five unknown, right? Five equation, five unknown, you can able to solve uh, either by simultaneous equation or using matrix uh, method. Huh? So I will recommend for you using a simultaneous equation because that is the, 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 the way that you're familiar with. All right. Um, okay. So um, you're having five equation, five unknown, you're able to solve huh, by simultaneous equation or using a matrix uh, solution. All right. You inverse the matrix, then you solve it. Okay, I will show you the answer. So um, I will highlight the, the, the strategy that used to solve uh, if you look at this question. So I'll focus on the 0, 0, 0 uh, component with this section number 2 here, uh, number three, four, uh, 2, 3, 4 here. They are highlighted with the bracket uh, in the red color line here. I'll focus on this, this section. All right, and then uh, just a side note there. So uh, we know that spring always gives us uh, f equal to kx. All right, so for point number five here, point number five, you just on a side note there, you write five f five x equal to k delta. All right, we just give you. Uh, the the F5 uh, value, you can straight away calculate what is the F5 value there. So F5 value, if you take the K, which is, uh, let me back, the K is 200 kilonewton. So 200 times 0 0.02, you will get 4 kilonewton for F5. Eh? For F5. All right. Now, since we are focusing on uh, two, three, four, right? You you are focused on two, three, four. So what you can do here, you just close. Oh, sorry, I over overdrawn again. So what you focus is this area. So you take out, not take out lah, but you close row one and the last row and you close the first and the last one so you're only focusing on uh, these three times three metrics here right or the, this two three four because the number you write with a pencil one two three four and five okay one two three four and five since you're only focused on two, three, four, for the zero, zero, zero force here. So it's, it's always good to close the matrix and you focus on the specific area inside the matrix here. So when you focus on the region here, you can copy the full matrix, the this section into a separate uh, into a separate uh, area in your answer sheet there. So if you expand um, F number four here, this is F number four. This is capital F, four X here. All right, so you expand the equation. All right, so F four is how you get the F4 solution? Uh, let me, how, how you get the solution that you see on the screen here or equation on the screen here? You're focusing on this one, this row, and you times the, oh, this one. How you get zero here? Oh, F4 is this one. F4. Okay. Then zero times 
zero, you get zero, plus zero times u2, you get zero, is zero times u2, is zero times u1, your u1 is zero, so zero. The third one, negative, okay, why this, one, two, three, so this is wrong, eh? this extra already. Okay, the third one is negative 200 times u3. So you get this one. So 400 times u4, you get this one. 400 times u4. Negative 200 times 0 0.02, you get this one. Okay, so from here, you get one equation here. Then you rearrange. Yeah. Re you rearrange the equation, zero equal to negative 200, uh, 400, U4 and minus 4K. Okay, then after that, you you rearrange the equation. Uh, what we are trying to do here is uh, we try to solve using a uh, matrix method, uh, or you can solve using five simultaneous equations just now. This is one of the way, all right? So we rewrite the equation. We have a 4, 4kn uh, equal minus 200u3u4 here uh, so that we can rearrange the blue color section into this one. Okay, so this is f equal kd. However, this small matrix here only focus on point Two, three, four. Two, three, four point only. And there's a number for this 4K on the left hand side. Although from this question here, although from from the from the F equal to KD on the top matrix here, uh, this is zero from the original. However, when you rewrite them into three times three metrics that only focus on two, three, four point. Be careful to expand the detail when you export the number. Okay, when you export the number, be careful. Uh, they, they might be some value when you transfer into three times three metrics where they're only focusing on the specific point. Okay. Now the equation in the middle here explain why that suddenly there is a 4k on the left hand side. Okay, and there's a zero here because in the equation there's no u2 uh, in the equation. Alright. Alright, so this is uh, just an interpretation of the information from your answer in the previous section. Okay. It will take some time to digest what is happening on the screen. Uh, however, if you understand the concept, then you are fine. What you need to take home from here is that uh, be careful when you are focusing on a certain area of the matrix. In this case, we focus on two, three, four. Why we focus on two, three, four? Because the question asks us to find what is the displacement from point two to point four. So we're focusing on point two, three, four. We close point one and point five. We close it. And then we focus on the specific point asked by the question. So be careful when you uh, in, uh, export out. Uh, you pull out the information from the matrix. Be careful to check whether is there any numbers on the left hand side. Okay, in this case, there is a one number, 4K kilonewton in the numbers here because we have a movement in point number five. So be careful when you do it, yeah? So just, just double check. Or on the safe side, always expand the equation. Always expand the five equation in this question. So expand the five equation, you manage to build uh, this matrix here. All right. 
we continue. So from here, in this small matrix here, you have three equations, three unknown. So you manage to obtain or find what is U2, U3, U4. Okay, you have three equations here. Let me know if you're not able to see the uh, three equation in the matrix. All right, so zero equal 400 times U2 plus minus 200 times U3 plus zero times U4. You get the first equation. You repeat for the second row. Repeat for the third row. You solve three equations. Okay. Again, if you're not able to understand how you develop the equation, go and read the appendix that I input in a model. Huh? All right, so from here, you manage to find your U2, U3, and U4. Okay, in this case, I'm not focusing on the uh, the detail on the number because in, in a test or exam, or even in your working life, the number will be changing. So important you understand uh, the way or the strategy we use to solve. So U2, you get one number. U3, you get one number. U4, you get one number. All right, we go for the next slides. After you get the U2, U3, U4, you substitute back into F equal to KD equation, the general one on the top left corner here on your screen. You substitute them back in the question. So you have only left out the two very uh, F1x and F5x in the matrix. So in here, you are having five equations and you only left out two unknown, which is the F1x and F5x. So here, you can use the first equation to solve already for 1x. You use the first row times this column to get equation for F1x. You get 1x already. Then for 5x, you develop the equation for the matrix. Use this one for 5x times this row also. You get equation for 5x, you're able to solve it 5x. Okay, uh, I already give you the detail on the screen here. So this one, you can take your time to read through. Okay, I just show you how to get the 1x, 5x. You just substitute the numbers. And you can double check whether your answer is correct or not, whether it's zero at the end. So especially for F3 and F, F2x, F3x, F4x, at the end you'll get zero, zero, zero when you expand the equation. So what happens if you do not get zero? What happens if you do not get zero? Meaning this number that you find in the previous section is wrong. Eh? Okay, so this is your how you self-check. If you do not get zero in your expansion uh, equation here, if you do not get zero in your expansion here, when you do the calculation, it means that your U2, U3, U4 is wrong. And for this module, we always recommend you use three decimal place. Uh, three decimal place. Okay. All right, so if you, are, if you only write 0 0.01, I will assume the last number is zero. This is how it works. Huh? So any question for how to find the F1x until F5x? This is how we solve it. So from here, you already get your U2, U3, U4, and you already get the numbers for uh, global forces at point number one and point number five. Okay, any questions so far on the slides here? Any question you want to ask me? Clear, eh? Okay, good. The next one will be element one. So since we already have the uh, global matrix here, all right, there's one more person I haven't asked this morning, which is Sue. So Sue, get ready. The next question will be asking you. Okay, so for element one, 
So element one, we will focus on. So element one, if you look at element one, or can use your pencil to highlight element one. So element one only only having a point one and point two. So what do we do? Again, use your pencil. Uh, go back to the original marking that you mark on your answer there. So one, two, three, four, five. So since we are looking at point one and point two, so what you do, you close three, four, five. Close three, four, five. Including this one. Three, four, five. You, you just close it. And you, okay. Then you expand the equation. So in this, in this, uh, on the slides here, I highlight the the area that you should focusing on, which is um, point one and point two section, and I highlight with the blue area here that it represent what is happening to point one and point two. So you copy the the you copy the matrix you, and then you put as and then on your answer sheet you write element one, and then you write small letter F. K, D, of course, with the correct bracket. F is a curly bracket. Displacement, D, is a curly bracket. So what you write here, you can extract from the global matrix to a element matrix. So you write F1X superscript 1. It means for element 1, 0.1, uh, and 0.2. 2X means point number 2, element 1. And then the stiffness matrix, always the same for spring, positive, negative, negative, positive, always same eh, for spring. The format is same already, already fixed already. Positive, negative, negative, positive. And you don't understand why this form come from, go and uh, view back the previous lecture. Eh? There's a video uh, on the Moodle, so you can always view back. Then you write the displacement that you already found just now, 0 and 0 0.005. Okay, this is U1, this is U2. So from here, you are having two equations again. You manage to find what is your F1x and F2x. All right. Okay. Uh, so what is the value for F1x from these slides? On the screen, uh, F one x equal to two hundred times zero plus negative two hundred times zero point zero zero five. Okay, so what is the answer um, for this one? Negative one. Negative one. So the direction will be. Going left or right? Left. Left, huh? Okay, good. So, uh, okay, good, uh, Sue. All right, so you have to understand uh, what happened if your answer is positive, what has happened if your answer is negative. Be sensitive to these two signs, positive, negative. You are looking at a force, so if the force is negative, means it's opposite direction of the general reference direction, which is uh, x to the left is positive in general. Right, so okay, so uh, F1x just now is negative one kilo newton. All right, the unit, huh? be careful. Huh? Uh, okay, so just now Sue gave us answer negative one without the unit means that if this this question come out in the test or exam, you only give me the magnitude, you only get let's say this is two mark. You only get one mark for the magnitude. The unit always important uh, for engineering. So be careful uh, whether you understand why we can get kilonewton here. All right. Okay. Then you do the same for F2x. All right. Uh, Brian, are you there? Brian, are you there? Yes, sir. What is the value for F, F2x1? What is the value? Positive one, sir. 
Hmm? Yeah, positive one, yeah. So, correct. Oh, very fast, huh? Brian, you? Very good, yeah. Okay, so, again, yeah, you take this one, time this one, positive, and then this one, time this one, you get one, okay? Uh, Brian, what is the direction for F2X? To the left or to the right? The right. To the right, yeah, because it's positive. Yeah? Okay, excellent. Uh, thank you, Brian. Okay. Let's move on. We already solved for F1X, F2X. Then we continue to find element 2. So element 2 consists of point 2 and point 3. So you again, you go to the matrix there, you go and highlight the area that you're focusing on. Um, 2 and 3 is the one that I highlight on the screen here. Uh, 2 and 3 section, meaning you close all the non-related section in the matrix. Then only, then you extract from the matrix. You write F2X2, superscript 2, it means element 2. And then F3X superscript 2, it means element 2, but point number 3. So you have uh, the matrix here, you just copy from, uh, okay. So Y in the matrix here is 400, 400, but when you look at element, it become 200, 200 here. It is because this is element. Okay. Element, oh, fixed already. Positive k minus k minus k k. And global matrix here, be careful when you export into element. Um, now, most students, they will just straight away copy 400 into the question, which is wrong. Eh? Because here is you are you are you are combining the two element here 400 previously you get 200 plus 200 here because when you, when you do superimpose just now there's a combination of number so be careful huh? this is the area where uh, i can say every semester there will be a student uh, they will straight away copy the 400 into the uh, answer so when you look at element remind yourself that you have a standard equation with this k minus k minus k positive k and the k we refer to the question so it's 200 kilonewton okay kilonewton over meter so be careful huh? it is is 200 and not 400 okay uh, be careful the the displacement still the same the displacement still you can use back only the stiffness matrix when you extract just be careful Okay, then after that, you do the same calculation like the previous one, all right, like element one. So F2X, when you calculate, use your calculator, you get F2X equal to negative one k, uh, kilonewton. Negative means you go opposite of the reference uh, axis, which is going to the left. Okay, F3X positive going to the right. So these two number will help you to draw your uh, free body diagram later on for element. You do the same for element three. You just close whatever that is not relevant and focus on the area that interests you. So element three is connecting three and four. So you just close three and uh, close one, two, and five. You only left up uh, three and four here. So you copy. You do repeat the same as what we learned for element one and two, repeat the same. F1, uh, F3x3, F4x3 means referring to element three. You copy, again, when you copy, be careful. Uh, when you copy, uh, remind yourself that you are looking at element and element always the standard uh, form with is positive k, negative k, negative k, k, and not 400. Okay, you get 400 because you do superimpose this now when you park the number uh, in the co parking complex uh, just now. Okay, you solve, you get the two numbers also. One is positive, one negative. You do the same for element four. Okay, focus on this area. You copy. Then F4X4, F5X4, stiffness matrix displacement soft 
for f 4x and 5x. One get negative, one get positive. Okay, so this is how you solve for the 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 this uh, tutorial question, and you should know how to draw the arrow if the question asks you to draft the free body diagram. Okay, so I think we spend about 50 minutes to solve this uh, tutorial question. Um, any questions so far? Any question? No. Uh, okay. Um, you guys still can go on? Or, or we... We discuss this one on Friday uh, on this Wednesday. OK, uh, and I just want you to go and do your homework. There's one uh, tutorial question. Uh, in Moodle. OK, you go to Moodle. Under uh, lab and assignment there, you click the review question. There's one review question there. All right. So. If you open, download the review question, uh, try to answer these two questions. One, it asks you what is the bounding condition, how many types of bounding condition. Number two is that uh, there's one question, um, I already changed the number. And in this question, I changed one of the point here. Uh, try to solve, try to find the global stiffness matrix for point number one uh, for, for this uh, spring system. Global matrix B displacement in point three four uh, reaction for force at point one and point two here. Okay, force at each spring, force at uh, ten newton. Uh, apply to point number four and point number two here, which is both one thousand newton. Uh, spring constant is given in the question, so try to find A, B, C, uh, A, B, C, D, huh? A, B, C, D. Um, we will discuss this, uh, pass up your answer before next class. Yeah. So today your homework will be doing this one. And then uh, this coming Wednesday, we will discuss. Huh? We will discuss. So you submit your answer. I will mark the, the your, your question uh, later on. Um, Again, this uh, this homework, uh, this review question is is not carry carry any marks. It's just that um, just to just to let me know whether you understand it or not. Okay, and uh, your performance in this uh, review question will be reported in the uh, uh, faculty meeting. Uh, means that um, I will bring your performance in the our staff meetings. Uh. so I hope you able to solve based on the tutorial question uh, based on the uh, lecture material right that we cover okay so if no question let me end the recording